Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well in this segment we're going to finish up the power supply wiring. We're going to get the rectifier tube in. We're going to be powering this thing up on a variac and see what kind of DC voltage we get. So let's get busy wiring up this power supply. Okay, so we've trimmed some of these wires to length and got these two stripped back ready to go from the choke. We took these two center tap wires and twisted them together like this. And we're going to put a little bit of solder on the very tip of it just to hold those together so we know that they'll stay together like that. And we want to make these two tags grounds so we're going to take this kind of l-shaped piece of wire we're going to stick it through this bottom hole like that and we're going to come in with our i know, I know you can't see me what i'm doing here but bend it like that let me zoom in here and see if you can see this a little better, what I'm doing here. And we've bent the end of this wire so it'll come up through that hole in the next tag over. And just like that. And we're just going to solder all that together. This one over here will be a little easier to solder because it's not bolted down to the chassis. And then we got our star ground point, which is going to be right here. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to get another piece of wire and go from this terminal over to these to make this also a ground. Now you might think, well, Skunky, this is already bolted down. That's going to be grounded. You don't want to ground it like that. You want to connect the ground points like this to the star ground point with a piece of wire. Because the most of the electricity is going to take the path of least resistance, which will be the wire. And I know, ideally, you want to insulate all of these from the chassis. But... In practice, it doesn't matter. I've wired a bunch of amps up like this, and as long as you run a wire from this ground point back to this star ground point, you're not going to have a problem. So let's get a little piece of this green wire and make us another ground here for that other tag strip. And we'll use our little screwdriver there to hold this in place. Well, I come in and solder this ground. Stick that wire up behind that one and solder these together. And there we go. So now we have this tag here soldered to this tag and this tag. And they're all going to these center taps on our transformer. So now we have our star ground point established here with our center taps hooked up and we can start soldering these capacitors in. So I took these two and did them like this and these guys are going to go just like this. I'm probably going to stand them up a little bit like that. We've got, we've got plenty of room here. We can get it away from that high voltage wiring. So I'm going to bend that one over. Bend that one over. And we'll solder up this center part and then stand them up while it cools off. And 
And there's those two caps. And then we've got some other stuff we need to connect up before we start soldering the positive sides of these. So I'm going to cut those two off. Just like that. And there we go. We've got those two guys just like that. So now we need to connect the cathode of this rectifier tube over here to this terminal, hook the choke wire up there, hook the other choke wire here, and then get our resistor that we're going to put across here all in place before we start soldering. So let me get all that stuff in place, and then we'll come back and show you soldering that stuff up. Okay, so I went ahead off camera and got some of this stuff soldered up. Let me show you what I connected here. This is the cathode of the rectifier tube, and this is where our DC that's unfiltered comes off of the rectifier. Comes over here to this pin, goes through this cap, which is ground. This is a ground point for both of these caps. This run, this green wire comes across here and connects to our star ground point. So this wire goes over to our choke over here. Then the other wire comes back from the choke connects up to this point, which then this 47 UF cap to ground. Now one thing I'm going to do a little differently than Matt did, he had a resistor between this wire and this point in the power supply, and I think he ended up with a 1K resistor to get to the voltage that he wanted. Well, what I'm going to do is, instead of just having a 1K across here, I'm going to add this 1K and this 1K, put a 2K across here and just eliminate this resistor. I'm not sure exactly why he had that there unless he was trying to slow down the inrush current, but I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. So this is a slow warm-up rectifier tube anyway, so it's not like this creates a ton of inrush current like one of those direct heated rectifier tubes does. So we're going to put a 2K across here and then this is going to be our final B plus point that we bring up here to these front end tubes when we get ready to wire those up. And then this is a ground point. This is where all of our center taps hook up in the star ground. So that grounds this cap. So let me go dig up a 2K resistor put it across these two points in the power supply and then I'm also going to run a bleeder resistor from here across this cap to ground and that way when and you could really put it across any of these between power and ground actually I might just put it over here to keep it out of the way of where we're going to be working later and something like a 470k works great for that. 2 watt, put it across these terminals and that way when you turn the amp off it will bleed the voltage out of these capacitors especially when we're doing this testing and we don't have any load on them they can keep high voltage on them for a long period of time so let me find a bleeder resistor to put in here and get this wired up and put a 2k across here then we're ready to power this thing up on the variac and Make sure that our rectifier tube's working and that we have some B plus voltage. Okay, gonna come in here and do the test on our power supply and see how this all works now. We've got our 2K resistor here across these two terminals, and we got a 470K bleeder resistor from this terminal to ground to drain our capacitors. And we got the Variac set on about 90 volts. We're going to start off there. And remember, this is unloaded power. So there's not going to be any voltage drop across this choke. There's not going to be any voltage drop across this 2K resistor. So I'm expecting to see the voltage fairly high, but not super high. And also note how long it takes before we start seeing voltage here. 
And I think you'll realize why I'm not concerned about inrush current with this indirectly heated rectifier tube. So here we go. And there comes our voltage. And you can see how slow it comes up. So I'm not worried about putting that 2K resistor instead of having two separate 1K resistors. I don't think it's going to be an issue at all with this indirectly heated rectifier tube. Maybe if we were using a directly heated tube, we might want to do something different. But Okay, so we're at right at 290. Let's go ahead and turn this thing up to that's about 100 volts. And we got 326. We're going to stop there. Well, I guess we could go ahead and see what this thing's going to make totally unloaded at wall outlet current or power. And 390. But again, once we put a load on this thing, it's going to come down a lot. So these 450 volt caps are plenty high. Even when you have no tubes or no load on the thing you're not gonna have to worry about blowing the caps up so there we go we got our dc voltage and we're ready to start working on the front end of the amp and i think that's a good place to wrap up this video well, as you can see we got a lot done in this segment we got the final wiring done on our power supply other than dealing with this illuminator and this switch which i got to go find a switch got our first tube in the amp everything's working good we got all this wiring done and we have a power supply so we can next move on to doing the front end of the amp so hope you're enjoying this content this is going to be a fun little preamp i know it's been a little controversial about why the volume controls on the output and there's been some pretty hostile reactions to it which is i don't know i don't get that but but anyway if you're looking for a super clean preamp done previous videos i'll link it below that's not what this is this is a different product this is designed to put color in the stream between the dac or the digital source and the solid state amplifier if you got a tube amp you probably don't need one of these this is more for a probably lower end solid state amp maybe some of those little cheap class d little chip amps you know this might be what you need or a little hundred dollar fuzzy solid state amp that's what this is designed for this isn't designed to be put between a nice phono stage and a macintosh solid state five thousand dollar amplifier that's not what this is for so anyway i'm sure people are still going to be upset about this and i can't help it we're moving on. We're building this thing. And I hope you're enjoying this content. If you are, please subscribe. Please like the video. Thanks to you Patreon folks, as well as people who have made donations to my website. That helps keep this channel rolling. And until next time, have a nice day.